but somewhere along the line, you changed. You stopped being you. You let people stick a finger in your face and tell you you're no good. And when things got hard, you started looking for something to blame, like a big shadow. Let me tell you something you already know. The world ain't all sunshine and rainbows. It's a very mean and nasty place, and I don't care how tough you are, it will beat you to your knees and keep you there permanently if you let it. You, me, or nobody is gonna hit as hard as life. But it ain't about how hard you hit. It's about how hard you can get hit and keep moving forward. How much you can take and keep moving forward. And we are back once again with The Booty. And The Beast Podcast, episode 12. Something like that this time, our buddy uh, Drew Peters, a.k.a. the Vanilla Gorilla. Uh, Andrew Peters is his proper name that his mother mm-hmm. and his father gave him, but nobody calls him that. From Nebraska, Midwest boy moved down to South Florida, now the chief science officer of Alpha Lion Supplements. Good to get Drew on. Good to talk to him again. Yeah, definitely. We used to talk to him a lot more. Well, we're also, we're all, including Drew, way more busy than we were Two years ago, even. I mean, we, is, for we sure. were doing weekly podcasts called the Iron Union Podcast, Drew and I, talking about everything from fitness, supplementation, drug use to psh, who knows. Uh, so it was good to get him back on. And honestly, I haven't seen Drew in person since last year at Supply Side. Oh, yeah. Which is, uh, it was last year is October. Supply Side, October, November this year, we will be there. I get the uh, prestige honor, you could say, of uh, being on a panel of one of the educational sessions on Friday. Actually, it's pretty cool. It was pretty Mm -hmm. cool to be asked to do that from Rick Collins. So we're going to be talking about the, basically the regrowth of the dietary supplement industry post-COVID. Is it post-COVID? Can we say that now? For the most part, kind of. I, can, I mean, I guess there's a new surge or something going on right now. There's mom. always going to be a new fucking surge. <laughs> it doesn't. Uh, ma- I mean, it, you, listen. You there's a new came variant. From, you came from healthcare. Saying. How many? Every year, the flu gets a new variant. It seems like there's mm-hmm. like a variant shot, or, or there's a different shot to to, to they combat take a guess this on for the vaccine, hoping that it's the variant that goes widespread. And sometimes it is, and sometimes it's not. And that's how COVID's going to be. Welcome to the world, people. <laughs> this is what it's going to be. Hopefully, um, y'all are doing good here. Danny and I are excited to get back again doing these weekly podcasts. However, there's going to be a bump in the road coming up as we travel to Europe for 10 days. Heck yeah. Starting in Barcelona for two, two full days, basically three full days, two nights, flying a red-eye flight at like 11.30 at night over the Probably San- the latest flight I've ever taken Definitely the latest flight I've ever been in my life. <laughs> uh, over to Santorini, Greece, which is a little island in the Mediterranean Sea. If you've never been there, you probably heard I about it. the island the entire span is like 10 to 20 miles. Like Maybe. It's tiny. That. Yeah, we'll, yeah, we'll see. So excited for that. That's, that's So basically, it's like sightseeing, touristy, barcelona e tapas, drinking... Uh, whatever, Barcelona, go to Santorini, relaxation. Like, get in early, do a spa day, do some hiking, check out the food. The beautiful, beautiful views. Of the volcano, I'm of the so Mediterranean. Uh, I heard the Mediterranean, a friend of ours said the Mediterranean was I think cold. right when we started talking, I told you that Greece was like my bucket list, like number one place I wanted to visit. And here we go. Check it off. Another uh, episode, an edition of Ryan does what he says he's going to do. He does. And then uh, finishing the trip in Rome, Italy. Italy. Super awesome to finish there because I'm going to eat so much pasta. It's going to be so good. And then hopefully we get back on track when we get back after New York. Yeah, and then we have New York. And basically the end of summer, we'll get back on track. We got a lot going on. I mean, we're not out of <laughs> shape any do. means. We, we work out every single day still doing our thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, a little Fit Players update for people you probably have seen if you do follow the Instagram for Fit Players is Carrot Cake, the vegan flavor that's going to be nationwide at Vitamin Shop, a bunch of different retailers, our website, which was planned for August 1st, has now been pushed. Let's just safely say September 1st. Yeah, and if it comes early, then we can just be super excited about it. <laughs> the flavoring system for Carrot Cake which was due into the protein manufacturer was delayed. So I think actually as of today, they're getting it. They'll be running the protein next week. Then they have to go through QC, which is quality control, make sure it meets spec. Then it gets shipped to us. Then we get it. Then we set up production day and we have to produce it. So we're probably going to be producing carrot cake mid to end of August with a launch of probably end to early September, end of August, early September. But what is that? What, what did we do? We, we promised an August 1st launch. We pivot. We pivot. Wow, she used a big business word. Pivot. And we're launching. We are launching 8-1 with Twix. Well, we can't, we can't call it Twix. We'll get in trouble. Crunch 
bar. There we go. We, we can't <laughs> we can't call it Twix bar, but we, say we do think, think Twix. <laughs> we do use real Twix in this. It's a cashew butter infused with a chocolate caramel candy bar, plant based protein from Ambrosia with caramel because I love caramel. Caramel and then topped off with real authentic, no bullshit Twix. You guys, this is probably. My number one flavor we've ever made. I say that. Bold statement, Kyle. It is. It's it great. Is, it's but great. But it's such a good flavor. It's so different than anything else we've made. And it's just, it's addicting. It's, it's a, really addicting. Even a, Ryan said yesterday that he couldn't put the jar down. It's good. But I'm a fat ass. I eat. <laughs> so, I mean, it's not necessarily always, like, listen, it sounds like I'm, I'm diminishing the flavor. I'm not. It's awesome. It is it's the best. It's a great flavor. The best cashew butter that we have. And we have some really good cashew butters. And that's even over cookies and cream and chocolate chip cookie dough. Um, Maybe because it's so new, it's fresh off the line. It's just different. It hits it's different. So different. We also finalized another flavor this week. That's going to be a fall flavor coming out, which we're excited about. I'm also I, excited about that one. I did I the R and D, and guys, this flavor is bomb. I don't think anybody else has ever come up with this flavor. I'd have to research that. Don't hold me to that, but I'm pretty sure we're the first brand to come out with this. Well, flavor. Well, you know that even if someone else has ours, is the best. Well, yeah, but they're going to copy us now because that's what they do, and that's they, and they do. can, they that's can, what people do make money off our ideas. I'm okay with that. That's what we call capitalize or, or capital. Cap, what's the word I'm looking for? I don't know. Capitalization. Capitalization. <laughs> Jesus, it's Friday. Um, I was going to say that, but big you week. Had that. We go to Chicago next week, and we're doing a, a huge strategic shift for Fippers. No, we're not selling the big company. Big moves, guys. Big, big, moves. big moves. It's going to be fun and awesome. But I'm, you know, obviously most excited that we're going to be accomplishing some business. But we're going to um, Gibbons Steakhouse, which the first thing the first thing this guy tells me when he told me we got a reservation was. Check out the carrot cake. It's a $20 <laughs> slice of carrot cake that it's is huge. the size of a house. Who needs that big a piece of cake? I'm going to eat that whole cake. Probably. We're still on the quest to find the best carrot cake in the country. And right now, I think in our rankings, like this little bakery cupcake that we had up in Isle of Minnesota is pretty damn close. Keys Cafe, really good. Um, Sugar Goat, really good. I think... Sugar Goat was still my favorite. Well, True Luck is still the best, but that's because we were deprived on prep and we cheated. <laughs> if anyone's ever been on a, like a strict diet, you know how much better something tastes when you've been deprived for so long. We gotta long. look to see if there's a True Luck in Chicago because I keep talking about I it. I feel like we need to like just get it and see if it's as good as we remember. We will get it before the launch. But uh, all right, enough about us, enough about stuff. The, the strategic news from Fit Players is gonna be coming out in the next two weeks. So we're really excited to share that news for people with people. Big deal. It's huge for us, and we're super excited that we're in this position to be able to make these moves and do these things, and it's because of you listeners and people who have supported the brand literally since day one or even came on after the fact. Um, whether you visit our website, purchase, talk about us, review us positively, all your friends negatively, and family. whatever. So um, that's about it. That's all I have here for the opener. Stoked to have Drew back on the podcast. I hope you guys enjoy this. We talk his personal life about being a father and a husband. And then we talk a little bit about dietary supplements because I suppose that's what we have to do on this channel sometimes. A little bit. Just a little bit. All right. You ready to do it? Let's go. Let's go. For the last two decades, we have been the best kept secret of the supplement industry. We've kept our heads down and worked. We pioneered full label transparency and full therapeutic doses because we believe that truly hard work requires truly effective tools. Two decades is a long time to commit to one pursuit, but when you act with purpose and become centered in yourself, eventually you realize that you were born and bred for this.
The things you once thought impossible, you now do every day. We don't like the easy way, it just doesn't feel right. We'll take the long, hard road over a shortcut any day. It takes longer, sure, but in the end, you know you earned it. And with the right team behind you, pushing yourself further than you've ever been will be just another afternoon doing what you love most. Adding my product is going to help you get to where you want to be. Five percenters is 5% of the people in the world that are willing to do whatever it takes to reach their goals. We're talking about business, success, education, willing to do whatever it takes. Whatever it takes. Whatever it takes. Whatever it takes. We are live, We A Beast Podcast, with our friend. I mean, he goes by Vanilla Gorilla Online, Drew Peters, Chief Science Officer, guy who wrote that the guy. Mem- the guy who wrote the memoir for Jack Olock. <laughs> I mean, he has a lot of different things going on for him. Andrew Peters, my man, it's been a hot minute. How are you doing? I'm doing great, my man. Yeah, it has been a while. Um, it used to be a weekly thing. Life happens, but... <laughs> Here we are, nonetheless. Um, I, lots happened in the last three years. But. You're obviously you still carry the best beard in the business. Look at that thing, well groomed with the point. Do you do you actually go in and get beard work done, or do you do it yourself? No, absolutely. I don't. I don't touch my beard like whatsoever, like at <laughs> all. I don't. I trust one person to actually trim it. Other than that, no. I mean, I do self maintenance to keep like the, the the jawline, like along the cheek, kind of clean in between. Like that's right here, and then of course underneath, I just keep that trimmed. Everything on the beard itself, that is one person only is allowed to touch it in terms of trimming. I give you shit for doing your nails all the time. <laughs> how, I haven't done my nails in forever. How often do you go and get groomed <laughs> up there, Drew? Uh, every three weeks, because I, I time it. I get the haircut along with the beard. They used to every two, but it's just kind of annoying. So then rather than getting Two cuts a month, it's one cut a month, so it's like, you know, three, every three weeks or crying roughly is about the sweet spot. You know, I get a, I get like a razor fade. I'm very picky even how I get the, the sides done. I get the side, like, faded with a razor rather than just the clipper. Life-changing. Try it. If you have a barber who knows how to do it, then I get the whole thing done. But one person does that. God, Other than that, I don't fuck with other barbers. Your friends, your friends back in Nebraska must just really look at you <laughs> like, God, look at this guy. He He's like... He's city boy. He's grown up. He's he's Bougie. pampered. Hey man, if that's our biggest complaints, my beard and my haircut, I'm doing all right. <laughs> well, a lot of people don't know Drew. Obviously, they know that you've you've been in the industry. You're a formulator. Uh, you work with supply chain nightmares, but many people probably don't know that you're a father. And it's it's a kind of a cool story. We found out we were expecting basically the same time you and Kathy were. Um, so we've introduced yep. two little two little shits into this world for the better part of the last. 16, 17 months. How's it been for you being a dad? Um, it's been great, honestly. I mean, it, it's not, I know some people like, you know, they, they have this big perception of what's going to be wildly different. I mean, there, nothing ever prepares you for being a parent. Like, I don't care. You can read books, you can do whatever. I didn't do any of that. I just like YOLO. And, you know, it's, it's I'm not going to say, it's going to be great in salt. Parents out there know what I say, and people who don't have kids, whatever, I don't really care because you don't apply. But it, it's really, We've been also very fortunate. It's not that hard. I mean, there's parts of it that do suck. Like, yeah, I mean, there's those times where we've been very fortunate, little man. Like, he may not want to sleep as much. He's initially, you know, feedings every two or three hours. We got quickly to the point where he'd get up once a night, even at by like five months. I think even he'd be get up once, like three or four o'clock, eat, and he'd sleep the rest of the night. Now he'll sleep through the whole night. So, like, we have been fortunate with that. The only issue we've had, like, we'll call it initially, but, you know, he's he's a very, very chill little guy. I mean, obviously, it's um, being boring to begin with. Like, I didn't really go out, so, like, I'm not really having the sacrifice of change, like, a social life. We have it set up where um, we can sit at the gym at night. So, for what we kind of already did, it kind of meshed really well. I mean, obviously, there's the the constant responsibility in terms of, hey, you always have to make sure that he's accounted for, which isn't a big deal. And it's a different you know, what you plan for, your your perspective on things, things that you may not have cared about before changes, you know, in terms of like, hey, you know, I need to focus on making sure this is aligned 
you know, for his future, or I need to, you know, care about these certain things that impact, like in terms of community, like, you know, where you're living, your school, so on and so forth. Not yet, but like, you know, those things you become cognizant of, you know, when you become a parent. One of the coolest parts about being a parent is we did baby wed leaning. And so we were able to bring in foods that I haven't had since I was like six, mac and cheese and like all these foods. And so I'm making it and being a guy like you, Drew, who, who, who's pretty meticulous about like following a plan, eating pretty clean. Uh, got to be honest, Drew, you got to be honest with me. Have you dived into a bowl of mac and cheese yet for, from your little man? No, he hasn't really. I don't think he's done mac and cheese, honestly. Really? He's, okay. He's pretty, pretty clean. Not because like, oh, we can only eat this. Like, it's just what he tends to like. He, he's huge on. Um, but we've been doing oat milk um, with oat cereal as his preferred. Just with some dairy, not from anything in particular. He just started getting like, um, like some eczema, like breaking out, like in like the, the spots. Mm-hmm. A lot of people have the lactose sensitivity. For a while, the thing that solved this colic was the alimentum. The um, hydrolyzed protein with minimum lactose, and that cleared it up. When that became unavailable, it was perfect time. We switched away from formula, more to sort, more solid foods anyway, and we stopped with oat milk. Some people did. It's like, oh, you're not supposed to eat oat milk to babies. Like, it's fucking oats, oats and water. Like, you know, if that's the only thing he's eating, yeah. But he loves, um, we'll do homemade things like boiled sweet potato, white potato, and chicken blended together. You know, the standard stuff. He loves like um, organic um, bananas, apples, pears. He doesn't like peas. He loves sweet potato. He um, just, you know, the standard baby stuff. He tends to love them. Like we have little things too. He loves like uh, fresh watermelon. He loves fruits. Um, he just tends to gravitate toward those things anyway. So, I mean, it, it's interesting and he's not really doing like, you know, whole mac and cheese stuff. But when it comes down to that, it's he's a kid, you know, if he wants to have some here and there. Hey, yeah, of course. Have some on the weekend during the week is what we have for food. You know, it's kind of how we, we lay it out. And he's not really a picky eater, which is nice. But Nothing's really changed me diet wise aside from I'm not really focused anymore on like having an off season or having a contest prep, at least in the current time. It's been kind of maintaining the same diet. You know, I'm still eating no chicken, turkey, all things I normally eat, but like it's not with a specific thing in mind. It's kind of actually been inherently I've leaned out, not by trying, but you know, maintaining weight, just kind of consistently eating. You know, doing live, they're doing this long enough. I just know where my protein carbs are kind of listed accordingly, and I've added in some other wrinkles and training. And it's been it's actually kind of nice. Like, I've, I haven't been forcing the issue. I think you've had the same thing where it's not like hey, I'm not focused on competing, I'm not focused on wrestling. I'm just kind of enjoying training and eating as I should. My body responds accordingly. Like, honestly, like my quad growth and things like that have just kind of happened without forcing the issue. You know, I've also then the other world of that minimal. Um, supplementation is refreshing too. You know, mm-hmm. blood markers are in a great place, and it's it's interesting how that perspective changes. And I love bodybuilding; is still my main thing. But like, not focusing off season or contest prep, it's been actually a really refreshing thing. Like, huh? Let me see. Let me do my normal food on the weekend. Then inherently, I find out toward the end of the week, like I sometimes drop weight. I'm like, all right, I'm gonna do a big freaking refeed just because my body's calling for it, and I'll down like a boda sushi and three more rolls or. Mm-hmm. Two jumbo arepas, four tequenos, a pescalito, half a quart of ice cream, and wake up the next morning two pounds lighter. My metabolism is doing crazy shit. So, you know, hashtag dad bod, you know, it's working (laughs) out, you know, so I look at it. It's working. Talk about your wife a little bit. I think it's interesting. Kathy and you, both competitors, both into this realm of things. Obviously, not everybody is, um, you know, obviously as lucky as us having a gym in the basement. We walk downstairs at four in the morning. Good. You guys actually, do you take turns going to the gym in terms of who's watching Little Man? Or you guys take them with you and they have daycare at the gym? Or how does that work for you? We're actually fortunate enough where we live. Um, her family's down here. So Monday through Friday, um, Abu, short for a boy, our grandma, stays with us Monday through Friday. And we have an extra room. So during the day when I'm working, and Kathy, when she's at work, uh, she hangs out little man. And then at night, you know, it's our time with him. And the weekends, it's all us. But we're fortunate enough to have that um, help. And, you know, we, we pay her, obviously, because, you know, it's still cheaper than, like, you know, a daycare or child oh, care. Yes, yes. better to take care of your, your, your little man than, you know, grandma. Nobody is going to, like, take care of him better than that. So you're fortunate enough. She gets home from work. Um, that's her time with, with him. We'll leave, you know, for like an hour, hour and a half when she gets home, spend some time with him just to make sure, hey, see him today. Um, head to the gym together, come home, and, you know, then we have it in a schedule. We're, you know, mindful. We don't have, you know, Abu watching them all night. So, but yeah, we're fortunate there where we can. If we need to take in the daycare, like say sometimes if, um, you know, we have nieces down here as well, if she needs to go and hang out, take care of them, then yeah, we can just take him with us to childcare on Saturday morning or, 
so on and so forth. Fortunate enough, our gym has a really good and you know, free childcare and a great gym and fitness system. You guys have seen that gym. So I know you struggled, Danielle, mentally a little bit with growing, getting bigger during pregnancy, not obviously looking the way you looked mm-hmm. uh, for me as your husband, it was just being a support system, obviously trying to be there. Right. But there were days, man, there were days. I'm just like, are you kidding me? You're growing this beautiful little thing inside of you, but I don't get it. I'm not in your shoes. Mm-hmm. How was that for you? Cause Kathy being a competitor, being super lean, um, you know, ever since I've known her getting bigger, carrying a baby and then the post-pregnancy change. Yeah, honestly, um, she didn't struggle a ton with it. I mean, once again, I'm not going to speak for her, but just from we had discussed it, and it was kind of surprising. And she's kind of a freak of nature in in many ways. Like people, like for the longest time, like like how how pregnant, how far along are you? Because like she didn't really put on all that much weight. Honestly, the biggest issue we had with her during pregnancy, we had zero cravings, zero nothing, was actually getting her to have an appetite. Mm. And yeah, that was me too. So if anything, that was the biggest issue. I didn't have any of those, you know, famed, oh, it's two o'clock in the morning, get me ice cream. Like, I'm like, whatever you want, I don't care. We'll get it for you because you need to eat something. Mm-hmm. So uh, mm-hmm. oddly, the things okay, would be like Chipotle. I'm like, chicken and rice. Like, okay, fine. That's what you want. I don't give a shit, sure. Like, oh, I'm eating so bad. I'm like, you're having fucking chicken and rice. It's a little more oily than normal. It's so salt, but like, chill. Then like, uh, she was back to post-pregnancy, to to pre-pregnancy weight within like a couple months. Like, it was like, nothing had happened. Like, those who look at her and they're like, how long ago did you have a baby? A year ago? Like, what the hell? Like, you know, not to be a dick, but she still looks better than 99% of the population does Mm -hmm. post-baby, which is kind of a crazy thing. And like, um... Yeah, part two, speaking of that, um, she did have the C-section, which is, um, you know, every circumstance is different. She was hoping for natural, but you can't even tell if she had, like, a C-section. Like, their doctor did such a great job in terms of that, um, how he did the work. Like, unless you actively, like, look for it and know it's there, you can't even notice it. And, like, she still has the thing where, obviously, so, oh, I think my metabolism got slower. I'm like, well, you know, you're... But now you're so say it like you're you're over thirty. Obviously, your body's gonna change a little bit, and you know hormones can change. But I'm like, you're, like your your body responds incredibly. You're not even like dieting right now. You're eating intuitively, training like you normally would, and eating you know the the, the eighty twenty rule. You're not putting on any weight. You look great, you know. So there's that mental mind fuck because like obviously, um, your body does do crazy things. Danielle can attest. But oh, like yes. she's, she's had ups and downs with it but the same part like she's a champ man like she you think i can't even really like you wouldn't even guess how long ago oh she's a mom oh how old you get like five or six you look amazing no it's a year and some months like get the fuck out of here mm-hmm. you know yeah. so i give her shit all the time it's like oh i mean i don't look as lean I'm like you got a baby are you kidding me like <laughs> you, you look like, I don't know, it's, it's mind-blowing but you know that battle talk <laughs> about talk about supplementation while pregnant because I, the legal corporate business answer is don't take anything pretty much. I mean, you put it on the, the labels, right? Don't take if you're pregnant. Um, you know, I, I have mixed feelings on certain things or certain things that I know Danny took while she's pregnant, obviously like your protein powders, things of that nature. So you're, you're a chief science officer, you're a formulator. What's the harm that you know of, or is it just required by the FDA to put that on there? Is there, is there harm to somebody taking a 200 milligram pre-workout because they, they allow up to two to 300 milligrams of caffeine per day. They say it's safe to take if you're pregnant. Is there a harm for a pregnant lady to take a pre-workout with 200 milligrams of caffeine, three, two beta alanine, four gram citrulline, things of that nature? Honestly, no, I don't see any issue with it. I mean, anytime you are taking anything and there's a, a hot button issue, I mean, I'd be more concerned about like, say, if you're at work at things like say plant protein versus like a pre-workout because you know it does it's an earth derived thing you can't have some heavy metal so on and so forth then once again what's the, the upper threshold prop 65 is a joke but from that standpoint a short distinct answer no on um, the same time as like you never know there is any possible adverse risk whether it be pregnant or not so it is just a good idea for legal compliance from a personal standpoint i have no problem with her taking anything at the same time like at that point, just doing cardio, you know, staying active so you feel better, mm-hmm. stay healthy when, before the energy hits the dumps. Um, so you didn't really use a lot at the same time. If you need a little caffeine through your day, it's probably fine. You know, I, I didn't see an issue with it. Um, most things, generally, as long as it's made a compliant way, shouldn't be a problem. Um, that's that's the big question mark, though, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, if you, if you know where it's at and where it's made and you trust it, then there shouldn't, in theory be any issue with it i wouldn't be taking like those heavy stimulants per se 
or mm-hmm. high, high, high amounts of caffeine, um, then it does come down to things like, say, post-pregnancy, if you are breastfeeding, then obviously there is a possibility of things being transmitted through breast milk. So if it's like things like the high amount of caffeine, then that could be a whole other issue, the thing passing through to the baby, because, you know, it is connected, and just in general, what is the upper stigma tolerance? I mean, that would be my main concern there, you know? You and I, we've talked about this, and I don't know how much you want to share about it, but I'll be honest, like, when we got pregnant the first time we were on prep, I was on a ton of shit. I was on a lot of stuff. Um, I have no idea how the fuck we got pregnant. Like, I mean, if, if I like talked to Mac Jansen. Like, how is this possible? He's like, well, your estrogen mm-hmm. levels were in line. He he showed me a picture of his yep. kids. He's like, these kids were, were conceived the same way. Do you want to talk about, like, were you surprised that you guys were sure. able to conceive when you did? Oh, absolutely. I mean, it's interesting because a few months prior to that, we'd actually talked about it, like, maybe the following year or the year after you're know, planning for it. And, you know, any, it, it, it's real. It's like in the compet- any competitor's mind, any times, even on TRT, mm-hmm. let's just purpose, purpose that, that TRT, even for some people, can be something that can be very detrimental to, like, overall sperm count fertility. That's a huge thing people worry about, even in soft replacement therapy, let alone you have different levels of that in the world of bodybuilding. <laughs> you know, so, like, you, you kind of think of that, like, man, okay, earlier years versus current years. Is that something that I'm going to be worried about? Is it something that's going to negatively impact me in that way? Um, so to that degree, I'm like, you, know, you look into it, you think it like, oh, man, I know tons of guys that have been on competing way longer, using way more stuff, all these pros. You get into things like fertility things like, you know, HCG, Clomid, so on and so forth that can, you know, dramatically increase the um, capability of that. But then, you know, same thing. I was in a prep. I was you know, on full blast and, you know, been blasting and cruising for quite a while. And lo and behold, you know, unexpectedly it happened. You're like, huh. So that's another thing too. I look back on. It's like, you know what? It's just, if it was meant to be, because like, if, if even all of that's in play, then it was meant to happen. And right. You know, some people, like I tell people like guys, your TRT is not an effective method of birth control. Don't rely on that. Like that's just oh, fucking no. stupid. <laughs> but the other part too I have a, a friend of mine down here, him and his wife, he doesn't, he, he's never used anything and she's perfectly healthy and they've been trying for almost a year and a half. Mm-hmm. Fertility yeah. clinic, in vitro, everything, and like and nothing is working and they can't get pregnant. So it's just crazy how that happens. You know, you can have a couple that generally does everything correct, does all the fertility and just cannot conceive. On the other side, you're like, hey, I've been blasting three grams a year for five years in this arms and... I eat like shit and all this stuff and hook up to somebody at a bar one time and they get pregnant. You know, it's, it's just crazy mm-hmm. how life works, right? Yeah. So it is. That is interesting. Are you looking to get back on stage at some point in competing or are you looking at this point now, just maintenance, longevity, just looking and feeling good? Honestly, I could go either way. Um, current mentality is I stay like 10 weeks out just because I like the level of leanness. I'm not killing myself to stay lean. However, I do like that you know, anytime if I want to like look good and feel good, I feel I'm in a good lean level, you know, visible abs and I'm leaner than most people, which I'm cool with. And I like it. I'm comfortable. I'm not feeling like diet death. I'm not killing myself. I still can enjoy things if I want to, you know, diet wise, I'm not doing a crazy amount of cardio training is good. I like and feel good. Right. Now. I do have the itch to kind of like, man, like my body's responded well. I have like, I'm like, this is the leanest I've ever been at 235, 240 ish pounds. I'm like, Jesus, you know, it's like, I kind of want to like get back in that to see like, damn, I could do some damage. But at the same time, it's like, it's not a priority. Like, I don't care because I'm not focused on a pro card. I never have been. People don't know me as a bodybuilder. I look, I, they know me as a formulator, scientist, industry guy that happens to look like a bodybuilder. And it kind of, it's my look, it's my, my thing, it fits. But I don't, competing doesn't make me money. Competing doesn't build, money. competing doesn't make me or lose. It, it, competing is not going to make me money. It's not going to increase my, how well I do my job. So mm-hmm. I didn't do it because if I were to again, because I want to, and I do enjoy competing. I do enjoy the stage. I do enjoy the process. Um, but it's, you know, it's, it's not even like it's that crazy because we have a stair climber at home. We train the gym anyway. It wouldn't be that dramatic, but like, I just feel that it would be time away, at least initially, um, from, you know, the enjoying the experiences with, with little man, you know, mm-hmm. at this point, she's, you know, same thing, same, same mindset. She just started her new thing career wise. And, you know, is that going to take away from the other priorities? You know, you can do all those things. And that's the part I've learned too, is like, I don't have to go into contest prep to lean out, to look how I want to look. I don't have to be 
super on point locked in prep mode diet wise to maintain that lean. It's year round. And especially because I'm not definitely, I, I have no plans whatsoever of doing another off season and force feeding food and trying to hit, you know, 270, 280 pounds oh. again, because it's fucking uncomfortable. It's so much food. It just, you don't, and then like, okay, now I got to call this shit off again. Mm -hmm. Like, Why? I'd rather, you know, just let the muscle gain happen if I feel like, hey, let's, let's focus on the omega growth for a little bit, scale back on that. Okay, increase calories, you know, half a pound to pound a month, nothing crazy. You know, some minimum mm -hmm. supplementation where the evil things in there is great, but blood works in check and, you know, so that's kind of where I am. So yes and no, but right now I'm not, I don't have a show date in mind. Let's put it that way. Drew, you mentioned before when we're talking about you not being known as a bodybuilder, but being known as a scientist and industry guy, let's, let's focus on the word guy because it is a boys club, right? I mean, this, the dietary supplement space for as long as I know has been the boys club with very minimal influence from females in terms of formulation, in terms of like marketing. Now you look at some of the bigger retailers in, in the business, right? Vitamin shop, CEO, Sharon Letty, female, um, Glombia. I believe the CEO there is, is, also a female, right, at Columbia? So. I'm pretty sure. Um, one thing that dietary supplement companies have a very difficult time of, and you can attest to this being in several different companies, is, is reaching the female demographic. Do you yeah. think we're going to get more female people within the industry, or is it going to come from influence like the Katie Hearns of the world and that way of speaking to the females? Yeah, it's interesting, and I, I've noticed that trend as well, a trend, but just or observation as well. I can't say that I know any female formulators. And again, people that do exactly what I do is very few and far between. Like most people, it's either done by groupthink at a, at a company or whatever whatever method they rely on a co man. Um, actually, I think I know like maybe a couple. There's maybe two or three, and they're like strictly in R&D. Some, there's some very, 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 very brilliant minds mm -hmm. in R&D that I, I know that are females in the industry, and they tend to work more so on the... QC standpoint of things, um, or on the like, just kind of management of R and D, but um, and they crushed it on the sales side. Like a ton of my sales reps actually are females, and they're they're fantastic at their job. They're very organized. They're great at it. I think it's just um, not so much where people don't want the female formulators or don't have an interest in it. It just the way I look at this too is like once again the. I'm mean, having open that can of worms, but just in terms of like the, the pay gap, things like that. And it's also, you take a look at that from perspective of what jobs are people doing? It seems that I, I can't remember who put it this way, but it was a very good observation. It's like men are interested in things. Women tend to be more interested in people in terms of what the career paths are. When you look at the guys as the dominant things, okay, more of like the, the numbers, the analytics, like the, the nuts and bolts, the how, the why, the removing the human element. Women were naturally, once again, I don't care if you're woke or not, women tend to be more the nurturing side, mm -hmm. tend to be more things where it's more interaction with the people, the empathy, the the reaction, the relationships. You know, that's why you're going to see tons more nurses that are female mm -hmm. versus guys, right? That's why you're also going to tend to see, in, see the sales thing, people, people. You know, ladies are like, they're great at it, mm -hmm. you know, but me, I'm on the analytical side. In the science side of it, there's brilliant female scientists. That's not even a thing. It's just like in a specific place, you know, it's it's just come from your perspective. But to that being said, it is refreshing that there are a few, and I, I think it's it's dumb like to have you know, you touch this as well, Danny, where female specific products or supplements just for guys, supplements just for women. I think that for the most part, that's interchangeable, but it, it, you do have to go obviously go after like, you know, your larger demographic. A lot of the, when you look at the nuts and bolts, a lot of the, the buyers of sports nutrition tend to be that 18 to 23 year old, whatever that, you know, mid twenties guy mm -hmm. looking at the get, yeah, gain muscle, look good for the beach, gym rat, typical thing. But you know, women are joining that category, which is awesome. And mm -hmm. there is some really cool things on the branding side that have started to emerge. You know, like Alani is just doing big things and it's more of a female centric brand. Um, I like that brand. Like they're at least, I like their drinks. Let's put it that way. The design's cool. I think their products, there's nothing special about them. Mm -hmm. However, I do enjoy their energy. They taste awesome. But the, the, the packaging is really cool, but it's got that soft, more kind of like a comic-y feel to it. It's really cool, mm -hmm. you know? So 
that comes back to not trying to spread yourself too thin. I do think that there are opportunities, and I'd love to do more of it, like female-specific products, not because it's marketing for females, but like, hey, there's specific female needs that never get addressed. You know, like some of the beauty even within products, some of the things that women tend to gravitate toward, you know, hormone balance, um, mm-hmm. you know, collagen, you know, things like that. Obvi does a great job of that in terms of really going after the demographic. It, it, it's not feminine branding per se, but has that more approachable open feel where like anybody would use it. You know, typically you're not going to think of like a 260 pound meathead bodybuilder talking about collagen and, you know, being a sponsored athlete, Mm -hmm. but at the same time, you know, it's approachable. Um, So I do think we're going to continue to see more of that. And I love that because, you know, that is something that is needed and it just, you know, and and a lot of the lines are blurry. Mm -hmm. You're seeing a lot more, like, I, I am sorry, I'm not on board with this. I, I put some, you know, you know, talked about the beard and the hair. You know, I have, my, I have a skincare routine, right? You know, you get 30, you know, you like to take care of that. I use some good beard products. You know, I invest. But the whole makeup for men thing, I'm like, guys, just, just fucking stop. <laughs> like, if you go on Instagram and like, you'll see, like, like, it's like more of a men's style or whatever. And you watch it, like, the dude, the dude like, do like a fast forward like, haircut thing, and he, like, pulls up the product, but I'm like, okay. Okay, then it gets like points. He was like, then he's like doing shit with his beard. He gets a beard straightener and like the daily like three drops of oil and like seems excessive. Then all of a sudden he like holds up a brush and starts studying the foundation of the car and now he lost me. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> like you have me till then. You have me yeah. till then. You know, some of that was stuff, but you caught me with the, with the makeup thing in my bro. Right. Come on. Unless you're getting on, on, on a movie set. Like, mm-hmm. Then again, I mean, there's some dudes that probably could use some makeup that probably look better. But. Yeah. <laughs> I will say this when it comes to females, I, th- I think we're obviously progressing in the right direction. And I think social media helps with that. As much as I hate social media, I think it does help with that. You know, you have the Bulmars, the, or her, the Kitty Hearns and of the world doing it. But because you look at, like, Danny's got some friends that, you know, dabble in the MLM shit. You know, like, you, we, you and I A know all about them. this stuff, right? <laughs> but if you traditionally look on social media, it's Abicare, it's Isogenics, it's Plexius, or whatever these brands are, and it's traditionally women. So for the argument where people will say, well, women just aren't interested, that's not true. We just don't know how to speak to them. And, and uh, you know, so I think by getting the right influencers, ambassadors, I know, like, Arms Race does a really good job. Doug Miller's got Sweeney, Sweeney the family there. She does yes. a really good job of speaking to people. But, I mean, it's, Drew and I can attest to this, too, like, the females, they, they carry the checkbook. I mean, they're, they're the ones who kind of drive finances. So if we can find a way to speak to them, and to your point, like hormones are completely different for females than it is males. So I, I like that we're starting to see different products out there with pregnenolone and inositol, some of these different ingredients that could help. Um, I got to ask Drew this because you've been formulating now for brands. How many years have you been doing this? Um, kind of consulting-wise since 2013. So almost 10. So almost 10 years. What's been the biggest dud you've ever formulated and brought to market? Biggest dud? <sighs> Honestly, I have to say like nothing. Nothing's ever like crashed like a lead balloon. Everything has either been well received or kind of did exactly what it was supposed to be. Um, I'd say one of the biggest things that just, I think it had way too much. Actually, okay, that's a good one. So I came in on the early, in the later stages of it. I wasn't fully ingrained with the company at the time, and I, I love the idea of it. I think it just there was so much rush to bring it to market. Um, when I was at ProSups, there was a couple things we went very big and very heavy on that I think had a ton of potential, but it was just very, 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 very tough in that space. And you know, it, it's so they're big, big cast decisions. There's big cast investments. Uh, mm-hmm. The high power potion, the first version of that, I think that had a massive potential. Everybody was loving it, but then it just didn't go over as well. Um, but you also guys had Kali. We have, I mean, you had some big names yeah. attached to that project. Yeah. And it, 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 I think it had a ton of potential, but it just, you know, it just, it's so hard to, to get an energy drink going, especially that time. Bang was still, growing rapidly you know it was like uh, there wasn't as much i guess except and now there's tons of them i think entering the market now it is still like saturated but i think that one was um one that could have done a lot better and it wasn't a bad product i still think it was awesome it's just it just unfortunately just didn't get the traction that we thought it would um at the same time uh the my bar the my cookie mm, that's i right. think were another two things that we were very heavily invested in and i think had a lot more potential but at that time that cookie was a nightmare and fuck bakery barn like i can't stand <laughs> that company i will never do business with them like by choice ever um 
mainly because uh, that cookie was initially something that, you know, was in development, thought of, and talked about with, with process, right? And some other co-mains are guilty of doing this. This is a, for, a good example of this. They worked on it. They R&D'd it. They got everything ready. And then they end up trying to sell the same damn cookie mm -hmm. to anybody. At the same time, ProSubs launched the, the My Cookie. You're seeing Muscle Tech launch the protein cookie. That same cookie was being marketed. I went to Gap next. Those damn cookies were in the freezer. They are trying to sell it to Gat, and Gat ended up not launching it because, like, they said, nah, we're, we're going to hold off and they never release anything, it seems. That's always a bottleneck. But the cookie was being promoted there. The student did the exact same cookie with mm -hmm. coating on it. Icon Meals in Dallas sold the same damn cookie. Um, and I want to say there's at least two other brands I'm sure. using the same damn cookie made by the same place. It got hoard out, and the problem was is that was one of those things. I I love it, but I don't. Uh, protein bars are a massive pain in the ass because they're typically a lot of these they they don't age well. Mm -hmm. um, there's so many things that can go wrong, and when you start adjusting macros, it's more of a food. You know, you never know how it's going to age. Um, the consumer experience, you have a one chance to impress somebody. If they get an older one or one that's not good, that customer is dead. It's a way different story versus having something made in the lab, bench top sample, set an R&D to taste versus going to the mass production. They didn't age well. Um, they got kind of hard quick. A couple of the flavors, one of them was a flavor that had never been used in commercialization before, uh, the lemon. And it tasted amazing, but then it didn't age well. It started to get this weird ammonia kind of smell. It started to break down after a couple months, and it just was unbearable. The fat kind of got this more rancid taste to it in the cookie. Like, it just... There were so many unknown variables, and unfortunately, you know, that's why you don't see any of these cookies anymore. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. So I'd say those three were probably, you know, the biggest investment-wise I've been a part of that just didn't get the traction or didn't pan out like we thought they would. What was the pre-workout you were involved in at ProSups with the black label? It was it won, I think, Stacks product of the was, Arnold. Uh, icon. So was that one had a lot I of like hype, it. too, a ton of hype, and I don't, I don't see it anymore. Do, what happened with that? It just didn't get the reception we thought. It was something we actually teamed up with Vitamin Shop as an exclusive on. It was very expensive. I think it was kind of ahead of its time. Now you see a lot of these, they call them fuck you pre-workouts, where it's just, we're going to load this thing. It's going to be ultra premium. This is the coolest damn thing out there. It's probably, it's one of the coolest things I've made, honestly. But the thing, it was so ahead of its time from some of the stuff we put in it that people just didn't understand it. And the price point, when it's like almost $60 for 20 servings, you know, it was an expensive product to make. And mm -hmm. it just, it's really hard to get the average person to, ex to um, understand it, to want it. I'm sure yourself and Junkie looks like, oh my God, this is amazing. And they bought it. And, but then when you have the average person walk in store buy them in shop, you know, for pre workout, I got this over here for 30 bucks for 30 servings, or I got this one for 20 servings for, you know, $54.99. It's a hard sell, and if you're relying on the people in the store to tell them why the product's better, that's a battle of anybody. Right. It's just mm -hmm. very expensive, and it's a hard product to move. One thing, I, the listening public have no clue. Like, Imagine this pre-workout being $55. When ProSubs does marketing programs with Vitamin Shop, and they're doing a percentage off sale, say a 20% off sale, that 20% off sale comes out of ProSubs pocket, not at the dollar amount that Vitamin Shop pays for that product, but at the list price. So if it's listed at 60 bucks, they're giving back $12 a unit now, it's $48, and so if they're selling to save Vitamin Shop for $23, they're only making 11 bucks, and they're still shipping. I mean, so there's a lot of things that customers don't understand behind that. Um, so on that same breath then, what, what's the, been the product that you've been involved in that has either had the best sales success or that you're most proud of? Um, in terms of actually being cool and hitting the market, I think that the Hyde Icon was up there. There was a lot of firsts in a product that just unfortunately didn't get a lot of traction. The Dr. Jekyll Stim Free was one we released at ProSubs a couple months before the Icon. It was the first to use New Level. It was the, one of the very first products to use Alpinia Galanga, which is now everybody's using the Nia Nextra. Um, it was one of the only products I've seen with Celastris Paniculatus, which is a really cool nootropic ingredient that I'm a fan of. Um, it had a lot of cool tech that nobody had used. It was also the very first to use the Calorber and GP. The Grange of Paradise everybody uses. That product had all those firsts and that one product. I love that damn thing. That was actually my go-to um, forever on the stim-free version of it. it. It worked really well, but the people see stim-free and like, oh, it's not going to feel anything. It, it was a, that was a really cool product. Um, Success-wise, I mean, um, 
A lot of things with Dragon went over very, very, very well, um, revamping that product line. I'm probably actually most proud of how that line came together mm -hmm. because we, I did a complete rebrand um, with Rojas, the designer there at the time, and myself, and just the look and the feel of that brand, how we got the packaging to look on top of how cool the products were. Like, that was a very fun project. I think the RX series, although I had to cheapen it a little bit from what I wanted it to be, was a very fun project. I love that packaging, the white with the silver and the light blue. Um, that idea actually I had since early 2017, and I finally got to do it you know, three years later. I think that one is one of my favorite ones that I got released in terms of how cool it was. Once again, it's hard to have people understand gut health. It's hard to have people understand cardiovascular health. You know, as cool as it may be, that was really hard to market. Um, current one, uh, the stuff that's Alpha line I've been rolling out has been been really cool. We have I have some very cool things that are going to be industry firsts. Um, hopefully, releasing by end of the year. And I'm not saying that lightly. We'll work on some very cool stuff in the present. Same thing. Another category that's already out there, but we're going to probably uh, we will be the first to do it this way. Is probably a Q1 launch. I'm very excited for the Apex Burn Thermo. We launched that was my most recent product launch. Yeah, I texted um, you about that. I that like was, it. I love that thermo powder. Yeah. I, I was like, this is cool. Um, and you may say, no, you know, I just made the damn thing, but there's a lot of cool tech in there. There's yeah. a lot of cool pathways that most people just don't think about. This, I, I hate doing the same thing that everybody else does. I hate like just doing the same shit. I hate copying, pasting. I just refuse to borrow science. It's just like, but why? You have to have some of that, obviously, because you have to think of the end consumer. The end consumer is not me. And you have to look at things you're like, you know, me, I'd rather have nitrosin or citrulline, but getting people to understand that of citrulline and there's nothing wrong with citrulline but if people look for it it's search terms and people are like oh it doesn't have 25 grams of citrulline compared to this over here it's not good that's a, that's a battle you always have to balance you have to remember remove yourself from the equation bring some new cool tech be able to explain it but also have some familiarity you know if you have a pre-workout with no beta alanine no citrulline or like even like i guess uh what's in, i suppose they're probably the main two these days Central one, they down and probably big too. If you have a product without that, it's going to be really hard yeah. to have people mm -hmm. understand it. Very. I totally agree. How, how has Elf Line been for you? A lot of people, I mean, you've been there for a, a hot minute now, not super long, but, you know, Jordan and Troy, have they sort of given you the reins, hands off, let you just have fun and be creative? Yeah, for the most part, that's um, that's the best part. And I love working for the brand. I'm not saying that because I work there. It's it's very cool. It's a completely remote company. I get along really well with Jordan and Troy. I talk with Jordan almost on a daily basis. We're always thinking of new things, bouncing ideas off. You know, it's a lot of times we'll just think of something like, hey, put this in the bookmark or, yeah, let's hash this out. And like, nah, maybe not now. But we always are thinking of cool, innovative things, looking at opportunities. And that is the cool part is that, to his credit, he's a great CEO. He's a CEO. In other words, he, he pays people to do their job. He does. He doesn't have. He doesn't micromanage. He gives. He gives a lot of trust there, even from day one. Where as long as I found as I can explain something, the why and the how, for the most part, I don't get a lot of kickback on it. But certain times, obviously, hey, we need to be a touch cheaper, or you know, I really, we really have to have this. You know, the analytics. You know, we, we just have to. I'm like, that's cool. Mm -hmm. You know, there, there's a good, healthy discussion in terms of the why. It's always a lot of good thorough thought put into what we release, which is nice. But um, some of the new stuff is, you know, has been very cool, but then I think some of the finest work and some of the more unique things we haven't even released just yet, but are in the queue um, in some existing categories. So I'm hoping to shake up some things. We have some fun stuff I'm working on. You guys do a really good job. Since the day Alpha Line came out, I think that they are one of the superior brands in the space when it comes to digital marketing and reaching mm – -hmm customers through facebook tiktok social troy does a good job you mentioned analytics how much of that yep. is provided to you saying hey drew we have a ton of search terms or, or you know traffic on these particular terms or we notice that people are going to google and looking for this particular ingredient is that provided to you so you can incorporate that maybe into a future formulation i mean i know you're kind of a nerd as well so you would be interested in that type of material Honestly, it's kind of it's an ongoing discussion. There's never a specific report or anything, but sometimes if we look to do something, okay, this is how I typically go about any formulation. It's like, all right, cool. Hey, we need we need X, Y, or Z. Like, all right, you know, my main questions is, who, what what exactly do you want the product to be? And I shape that by 
who is it meant to compete against? Who's your biggest competition? What price point do we want to sell it for? How much do I have to spend to make the damn thing? And, you know, ideally, is there any like must haves that you're looking to have in the product, at least initially from there? So from there, we do competitive analysis, look at whatever else competition is, how they go about it, servings, ingredients, costings, and so forth. And either A, it's going to have, you know, some similarities or, okay, everybody's doing this. Nobody's doing this. It's completely, at least to me, obvious thing that can make the product better. So it's a combination. It's really product specific. And I think there's a lot of missed opportunities a lot of brands are picking up on that we're going to be hopefully um, cashing in on very soon because, like, one, it's cool and it needs to be done because it's, why not? And two, it's like, dude, like, this is an obvious thing to me. I don't, I can't believe nobody's thought to do this. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So it goes both ways. Can you talk to me about Turkesterone? What's your thoughts on it? I mean, it's obviously the hot muscle building agent that every company in the world seemingly flock into release. Testing is inconsistent. There's no standardization for testing. So there's a lot of question marks with that particular ingredient comes from the ectosterone family, which I mean, has some validity behind it with some different research, but on that particular ingredient alone, what's, what's your honest feedback take on it? There was a long discussion. Um, initially when it came up, I'm like, I don't want to use it. It's just, everybody else is doing it. It's just copy and paste. I just feel that it's just the follow the pack type thing. And we're like, yeah, we're not gonna, we're not gonna touch it. We're not, that's not who we are. Then it shifted to, Hey, okay, let's consider this maybe as part of something else on a reformulation. Um, we're looking at it hard then, but okay. It's not going to be just as is verbatim, same as everybody else. But then the recurring issue where I'm like, this is off the table kind of decided like now nah, we're not going to bother with it is um it's as you mentioned it's so inconsistent um in terms of having a material that constantly consistently meets spec um and i'll just leave it at this is that there are issues finding consistent material with like 10 percent mm-hmm. actives you know so then when i see things that are claiming that they have 20 percent or significantly higher actives I'm very curious. I'm like, has that actually been tested for the actives, you know? And that isn't an accusation. It's not called an NBL. It's just a plausible question. Like, well, if most are struggling to find consistent material that is hitting 10%, you know, like I'd be very impressed if it does in fact have a consistent material to be heating these higher ones. So it's just something that we have looked at. We did a very deep analysis on it. Um, I don't think the science is terrible on it. There isn't a good promising one. If the material is, Correct. Mm-hmm. It's just, I, I just, it's really hard to find a specific consistent material that I would trust. You know, you know, you can test every lot, make sure it is that. It's just like, what is it worth the trouble, the gains and the versus the investment? And also, once again, I hate doing the same thing as everybody else. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, as you f- finalize the podcast here, Drew, I'll give you a, a chance to plug. Like, what, what can Alpha Line fans, fans of you, fans of just science and, and supplements, what can they expect for the rest of the year from Alpha Line that you can share? Um, some of the palms, everybody knows we have a pre-workout of the month. Mm-hmm. Every single month we release a unique flavor into products. Um, I think we have some really fun ones that are going to be rounding out the year. I'm actually quite excited for the one dropping in August. It's a really fun flavor. And it, it's, it's like, the one is like so obvious from like, it's been a long damn time since I've seen this flavor. And I'm like, why not? It's so big. It's, it's a fun one. Um, August, um, and we're trying to do things on the theme wise. And what I will say is, you know, it comes down to August, you think county fair, state fair, mm-hmm. um, carnival, so on and so forth. That's your hymns of what the flavor may be. You'll be seeing that, I believe, um, the first week of August there. It shipped today to the warehouse. Um, it also in a unique product. Um, we, we've released it before, but it's going to be a special one. Um, September is actually a pretty fun flavor as well. Same with uh, October. I mean, that's always going to be Halloween theme. Mm-hmm. We already got that one locked in. November, and getting a little bit creative. And, of course, you have your, your fun things for December. So the palms are lined up for us the year. There'll be some fun ones. Um, there's a couple of potential facelifts um, for how some of the appearance is. That's an ongoing thing, as always. Um, but I'd say that's the main thing is I'll hint that because we do have something very, very, very big, at least right now, slated – for Black Friday. Okay. Um, yes, it's a sale time, but obviously, if we can get everything on course, and so far it is, there'll be a very big innovation in a new category um, around Thanksgiving, and I can say that. Love okay. it. All right, if they want to follow you on the socials, at Vanilla Gorilla Drew on everything, right? 
Yeah, I keep it simple. So I'm not hard to find. At Vanilla Gorilla Drew. Everything from Venmo to Cash App to freaking Instagram to TikTok. <laughs> anyone wants to pay. I hate TikTok. <laughs> everything. Yeah. Keep it consistent. There's no, no guessing. You know? Love it, dude. Well, we appreciate you coming on. Of course. Appreciate you for having me. Thank you guys for the chat.